A frog. Goliath Frog. size of that frog. Whoa. <laughs> the old hold it towards the camera trick. What's up guys? Just keeping it real fishing. Taking a look at the Mans Goliath frog. This is a pretty new release from Mans. Uh, the real appeal on this frog, as the name implies, is the size. It's a very, very large frog. Most of the size is actually coming from the width, from left to right. It has a very wide profile. And it is a little bit longer than most of our frogs as well cast really good uh, because it is quite heavy. I'll forget the weight. I'll have to throw it up in the, uh, the video here. Let me tell you what this, this frog offers and we'll take a little bit of a closer look on the tabletop. Um, this frog is uh, what I've noticed in uh, about a month or so of fishing it. It walks the dog really well. You can kind of keep it in place. Although because of the mass of the lure I find that I have to just barely, barely my walking technique is different than it is on other frogs. I have to just barely tap the line. Anything more will usher it, usher it forward. The slightest tap will get it to pivot and it'll stay in one place pretty nicely. When you're chugging it along, it has a, a bobbing, has a definitive kind of up and down motion. And if you reel it in a little bit, it leaves a very distinct bubble trail. You can see the hooks there on the back. The hooks for the size of the lure appear quite narrow. I'll show you from the hat cam view as well. They're very close together. You can see the size compared to my thumb. They're, I'd say, only about a half inch apart or so. And they're a relatively light gauge hook. I haven't had any problems in the fish that I've caught. And you'll see following, I did get one, uh, a five pound fish on this. I, I uh, dragged him out of heavy cover uh, quite easily. But those hooks are not what I was used to coming from like coppers and, and booyah frogs, stuff like that. Um, what else? Uh, oh, as I've been using it, I've noticed, of course, it has a weight on the bottom. Most of our frogs nowadays have that to keep it, you know, upright and in the correct position. This one, though, I'd say about every third cast, uh, it'll either flip over on the cast or, different than a lot of frogs, as I'm reeling it in or I'm chugging it in or whatever, if it hits any kind of structure out there, a lot of times it wants to flip. But the good part is that even though those hooks are exposed, they tend not to really catch on anything. So I don't see that as actually that bad of a thing because when it's upside down, then the fish are seeing that, which is an interesting profile as well. All right, guys, so that's, that's pretty much it with the Goliath frog, straightforward. Oh, one other thing actually, very important. It's very, very waterproof. And Mans actually uh, is, is marketing it as such. I guess this is something that they tried to work on. In my, um, I've been fishing the black one. Uh, the black color one for about a month and I finally got that one torn up after about eight to ten fish but even so it's not taking on water the nose piece right here that plastic uh, ripped and this hook assembly came out but it just doesn't take on water I have yet in a month of fishing that black one had to squeeze any water out of it it's just sealed up really really well I've been fishing this one now for about a week and same thing they just don't take on water which is awesome so that's pretty much it everybody, man's goliath frog. If you're trying to elicit a little bit of a bigger strike, this may be the thing to do it. In all honesty, um, I got one five pounder out of it, which was nice, but apart from that, they've been the usual one, two, and three pound fish. So they're still gonna go for it, but the idea is hopefully to get a few more large strikes with that big profile. Uh, I'll just mention apart from this, if you are looking for a large frog, I also used a Z-Man Pop Frogs, which is a six inch frog. It's not as wide, but it's very long, and if you're looking for large floating topwaters, that's another excellent choice. But that's been the Man's Goliath Frog, and uh, we'll just take a little bit of a closer look now at the tabletop, and I'll show you it against some, um, some more readily known options so you can get a better sense of the size. There we go. Fish on.
There we go. Fish on. Lord's coming apart here. Well, there's the man's frog. Totally separated from the hook assembly. This is a little guy. Maybe, um, I don't know, high ones. It might break two pounds. So, uh, alright, first one on the man's frog. That's two misses and, and one on. And you can see, maybe hack him would be better. Um, both hooks went through the top there. So I guess the close proximity is, is pretty interesting. Got them on both. Size-wise, you know, big frog, but not super hit big, you know, we're not talking massive. We'll see if it can elicit, you know, the strike we're looking for. Looking for those uh, five plus pound fish. Okay, here we are at the tabletop, guys. I have uh, one, I just put it back in the package so you could see what all you get. And you can see uh, in the package it does look quite large. Let's take it over and examine some of man's claims. I've always found man's lures to be, uh, you know, perfectly fine. Never that refined. Uh, tend to have some rough edges. You know, they're not high-end lures by any means, which is, is absolutely fine. Um, but I get that here in this lure too. It, it does the job, but it's not polished like, say, a Copper's Life Target or even like the Lunker Hunt Frogs. There's definitely a, a different level of uh, design and just the way it's put together in some of those other brands. But I want to call your attention to the back here. It's kind of interesting. If we just go through this, it says it's a larger frog that casts better, floats better, and fishes better. Uh, yeah, it casts pretty good because of its sheer size and weight. Floats well too because it does have more size. It allows it to be uh, very buoyant. Uh, specially designed hook. And I have the black model here. And I guess it is specially designed. I'll take a close look at it in just a second. But that doesn't mean that's better. <laughs> different does not mean better. Different means different. So we have our quote unquote specially designed hook, an engineered weight location. Um, kind of fancy way of saying that they put a weight there. I guess no matter where you put it, you have to engineer that. <laughs> and uh, sorry to beat up on you here, man, but it's just kind of funny. I think you take a lot of fishermen for fools. Uh, and an extra long skirt for legs. And uh, I don't think the skirt's particularly long. It's not short. I'd say it's right about average. This last part here is a little interesting. The Goliath frog can be fished across any type of vegetation as well as open water. Body has been designed to virtually eliminate any water by having a unique feature. <laughs> Again, I feel like it's a late night infomercial. It's a unique feature. But what is it? We have no idea. Looking at it, it's just, you know, rubber shaped like a frog with a hook down the middle. But there is some unique feature. I don't know what it is. However, like I was saying before, on the water, I will attest to this fact. M Mans is calling your attention to it. And fishing these now for about a month and a half. Um, you know, again, I've fished both of them. I just put this one back in. They, they don't take in water, man. They do not take in water. I have not had to squeeze one of these things out yet. I think their quote-unquote unique feature is really this long, slender nose cone and the way it seals very, very well to the hook. Um, because if you're perfectly sealed there, water, even though this is a little bit open here, um, and I forget the, the property of hydrodynamics or whatever this is, but water can't get into that hollow cavity unless there's a way for air to exit somewhere else. So as it sits right here, it water just does not get into this thing. That is true. Whether or not that's the special feature they're alluding to, I'm not sure, or a unique feature, as well as extra wide shape for high flotation. And um, high flotation is accomplished just by uh, being very buoyant, you get that just by having a lot of air trapped in here. You can make it very tall, and it would be equally buoyant, 
but of course a wide lure presents itself better to the bass underwater as having a large profile. So uh, typically don't do this, but they just had so many kind of funny things the way they wrote it here that I had to address that. Uh, Alright guys, so let's take this one out and just take a quick look and I'd like to compare it against some other frogs that you may be familiar with in terms of size so you can see just how Goliath the Goliath frog is. Goliath frog. Alright, I think you saw pretty much everything that you were going to see before, but let me just do the once over here guys. Just talking about these hooks and uh, you can see they're kind of close together. We could actually measure those and I kind of took a guess when I was on the boat there, but in fact they are exactly one half inch apart. I don't know how much of a spacing or how much of a deal uh, the spacing makes. We have some lures that just have a single center, center mounted hook. So I don't look at that as a liability. But typically we do see these hooks mounted further out on the side. And I don't think that that's a bad thing either. The gauge of the hook is, is fine. It's, it's definitely a robust hook, but it's not outright the same thickness you're like uh, used to seeing on some other frogs. Like the, if I roll in the coppers here you could see the difference in those hooks pretty readily if I put them against air there or uh, rather let me put them against that wood background and equidistant there we go you could see quite a bit of difference again don't look at this and say oh this is a crap frog just because the hooks a little bit thinner still you would have to be pulling a really big bass out of some really heavy stuff to bend it out so is it possible? Sure, it's not as thick as some of the others. Uh, do I look at it as a liability? No, no. I pulled that one five pound out, uh, five pound fish out pretty readily. So um, the flip side, whenever we talk about thinner hooks, is faster penetration. So when you're fishing heavy cover, usually people elect to kind of trade off a little bit of that penetration for just sheer robustness because you know you're going to have to potentially drag them out of that heavy cover. Uh, but you do have that as an asset, is it's going to be able to stick that fish a little bit faster and uh, perhaps get a little bit deeper in because it's a more narrow hook. You can see the hook assembly here is just kind of kind of free to move around. Right. Pull there, weight, really, really sealed well here. It's almost like heat shrink, the way that they uh, bring it up here and taper it into this nose. It's perfectly sealed. You can see the profile there, it has these raised ridges, and even though the hooks are right there, there's, these hooks are not in contact with the body, um, I have found this lure to be extremely weedless. Uh, even when the thing does flip over on its side during a cast or during the retrieve, which I was mentioning on the water there, it does do semi-readily. Um, every couple casts that will happen, where it either lands like that and likes to stay, it's not very quick to right itself, I guess because it is so wide. Uh, that width is kind of, a, I guess you could look at it as a double-edged sword. It's good in terms of profile. That's what we're looking for here is just a big frog. So scores there, no questions asked. But also something that's wide does not want to flip. Yeah, it has that weight on top and that weight wants to come to the bottom, but the wider it is, what I have found is the less or the, the more reluctant it is to want to flip over. A lot of times I'll cast and it lands like this and I'm chugging it forward and I'm really kind of popping my rod, doing things to try to make it flip over, and sometimes it doesn't. Um, but again, it's one of those things. I don't even see that necessarily as a liability. The bottom here is white and plain, and that's fine. You're going to get strikes. But as long as I'm not getting hung up in weeds too much, if the lure is upside down, and if the fish are seeing that part, that's certainly the more interesting part. There's a lot more going on. The green, the speckles, the eyes, everything. There's more contrast to it. So, and of course you're going to get strikes both ways, guys. The only downside to this would be if it got hung up a lot because of those hooks, but they're protected enough. Even though they look like they would grab everything, I have found that somehow, just the way I, you know, it comes up over cover, they don't get hung up very much at all. Uh, it's pretty interesting. Let's take a look at the black one here. really like this black finish. It's kind of like that midnight with the uh, red flake in there. Uh, fished them, I don't want to say equally, but I definitely was getting more strikes on the black. I just really like black frogs in general. I wanted to get you guys another color to see and just something else, but if I have to choose one color for a frog, I, I go with black. I just really like it. You can see the skirts there. Silicone skirts, not too long. I know some people like to cut their skirts. They do this thing where they kind of move it to the side and cut it even with the nose. Well, you're not going to do that here <laughs> because of the sheer length of the, the lure. They don't come close to the nose. 
Uh, speaking of the size of the Lord, let's take a couple dimensions here. If we measure the length from where the rubber starts to the, oh, I guess we'll measure to the end of the body here, where the legs are. You're looking at about three and a half inches. If you want to measure it in full, accounting for the legs, you're looking at about six and a quarter inches. Width, which is where it really shines, is about one and three quarters. Okay. Now guys, the next thing I'd like to do, and the last thing, is just compare it to some other frogs that you may have already in your tackle box. Goliath frog. Alright, here we go. Here's a Goliath frogs, and this guy right here is a Lunker Hunt Lunker frog. That was the first one that they came out with. You can see the size there. Maybe we'll just try to roll them all in. Right here is a Booyah. Now get it out of the way. Here is a Booyah frog. It's their, uh, I guess their standard size. I'm not sure what they call that. Booyahs are known to be rather, rather thin and cylindrical. They walk the dog exceptionally well. They have that keel on the bottom. But you can see, totally different class of frog there. That one is truly about twice the size in the water as perceived by the fish. There's just a lot more body to it. Um, but in terms of a walking frog, this is probably one of the easiest ones. If you like doing that side-to-side -side action, you can do it on this. Um, it, I found it requires a certain technique. I have to really just barely pop that slack, whereas on this one it's more forgiving. Anybody could walk the dog with a booyah frog. You can see that keel there. So anyway, that's the size compared to that guy. Here's uh, one I did a review on last year. Here's the combat frog from Lunker Hunt. The whole idea behind this guy is to be a bigger version of the uh, Lunker Hunt Lunker Frog. You can see the combat frog is bigger, but still not nearly as big. It may have those nice legs, but just in terms of sheer body and length, even when these legs kick, and they come back too, by the way, um, just in the water, that Goliath frog does live up to its name, and it is very, very large. And then lastly, how could we forget about everybody's favorite, Copper's Live Target. This is the uh, their large version. I believe this is called the 75T. Just, uh, if I can get it to stay straight. Well, it's about as, I'll just hold it in place, guys. And you can see right there. Let me give you a close-up on this one. This is probably the one I think most people have. Of course, Coppers is known for tons of detail. Whether or not you feel that makes a difference is, you know, everybody has their own opinion. Here it is from the bottom. And that is the telling angle. That is what the fish see. Well, actually, in the case of the Goliath frog, when it flips over so much, sometimes they're going to be seeing this side. But let's assume that it's on the side it should be. That's what the fish see. I do wish Mans would have painted that over. That would have been nice. Or maybe even painted it red or something. I don't think the fish particularly care, but it's just not as well integrated as on some other lures. But that's more of a nuisance to the angler. I guess the fish don't probably care so much. But in terms of size, guys, there you go. Coppers versus Goliath. Not a huge, huge difference, but if you are looking for that biggest frog out there, uh, the Goliath frog, in terms of readily available frogs, I'm sure there's some little mom and pop companies making some, you know, hand poured things that are larger. I think 316 makes a pretty big, 316 lures, I think they make a pretty big frog. Uh, this is one of the largest hollow body frogs you can get. And as I mentioned on the water, though, I'll just repeat again if you are looking for a very, very large frog, Another option is the Z-Man Pop Frogs. They do offer it in a 6-inch long configuration. Very, very long in the water, although not quite as wide. Alright guys, so that's it. That's been the Goliath Frog. Uh, it's a good frog. And, uh, oh, one last thing. Let me just give you a weight on these guys. There we go. Fish on. Fish on. He just slurped it off. 
Hard to tell. Oh, it's a good fish. It's a real good fish. All right. Here we go, guys. Another nice fish. Delicate strike, too. Delicate strike. Just slurped it off the surface. See inside there. It's on that man's. Uh, what is this guy called? <laughs> Colossal? No. Goliath. The man's Goliath frog. Get a weight on this guy. Okay. Alright, let's see what we're weighing in at here. This is going to be a solid. Mid to high four, I believe. Get this thing in there. Five one and one eighth. Sorry about that. I meant to roll this in earlier. 0.95, just shy of one ounce. Oh, 0 0.90. Let's see if we have any discrepancies, lore to lore. 0 0.90. Okay. Just shy of one ounce. So, an ounce is a nice, hefty frog. You're going to be able to cast it pretty well. I have found that to be true. It launches very nicely. And, um, yeah. So, that's it, guys. There's only so much you can say about a hollow body frog. It's a piece of rubber that floats. You fashion it after a frog, put on some hooks, and there you go. It's bigger than most, and hopefully it will get you, if you decide to get it, some larger fish. As always, guys, thanks for watching. And if you have any questions, feel free. Leave it in the comments. I'm pretty good about getting back to everybody. All right, everybody, take care.